The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN, now five days a week from 3 to 4 Eastern. Ken Shreve with you, as always. Thanks very much for tuning in. Number to use to get through, uh, that's going to be 877-927-6648. If you can't listen to the show live, head over to iTunes. You can get the show as a podcast. And don't forget, you can listen to all TFNN programming on your handheld device. Now, just open your smartphone browser, type in tfnn.mobi, and you can get the stream uh, that way 24-7. And uh, don't forget to check out Tiger TV. That's uh, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Channel 1, the show is carried live. You can look at charts right along with me. The show is archived in Channel 13. And Tiger TV is also viewable on your smartphone as well. All right, start uh, by taking a look at the CBOE Volatility Index uh, today. Let me go ahead and uh, update this. It is uh, up. Uh, 74 ticks right now, almost 4.9% uh, to 1575. Really, the line in the sand here is the 50 day moving average at 1698. So, the VIX right now is trading in the bottom half of its uh, trading range. If it does uh, stay in rally mode, which it has been basically for the past uh, five, six trading sessions, uh, expect that 50 day line at 1698 to be a potential resistance level. We'll see if that turns out if it is uh, able to move above its 50-day moving average, then its next uh, resistance level will be its 200-day moving average here at around uh, 20 bucks or so. So uh, VIX is uh, still not out of the woods yet. You know, as the, as the VIX uh, rallies, that tends to weigh on stock. So if we do get do see the VIX get turned away here uh, soon at the 50-day moving average. That could be good for uh, stocks. Let's take a look at the uh, major averages here. We'll start with the NASDAQ composite. The tech index uh, right now up a little more than six points, two-tenths of a percent, to 3,076, trading in a very tight range today. Volume on the NASDAQ Friday, 1.32 billion shares. 50-day uh, average volume for the NASDAQ composite right now is around 1.5 billion. So below average uh, Friday. Right now it's tracking uh, very close to that 1.3 uh, billion share level on uh, Friday. Take a look at the S&P 500 here. And it is also trading in a, a tight range today, trading right in the middle half of its trading range, just like the NASDAQ Composite S&P 500, up about one and a half points to 14.12. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange Friday, about 500 million shares. We are tracking a little bit lighter than that, not by much, maybe three, four, five percent lighter than that today. So another low volume day on uh, Wall Street, but um, you know, not much, uh, not much action here. The uh, indices holding, uh, holding near their highs, and um, you know, I still maintain that just not really seeing anything in the way of uh, sell signals in this market. So, in terms of the longs that I currently have in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio, I'm uh, willing to uh, rather than you know take uh, take small profits, decent profits, I'm willing to let these stocks uh, work. And um, since I'm not seeing you know, sell signals, uh, not only in the broad market, but in current holdings, I don't want to be too quick on the trigger here. Taking a look at crude oil today, down 68 cents, 7 tenths of a percent to 95.47 a barrel. Uh, the tropical storm or Hurricane Isaac uh, still uh, an issue here. I think it's still a tropical uh, storm. I don't know that it has much potential to get uh, much higher than a um, level one uh, hurricane, but um, the uh, Isaac is already disrupting oil and gas uh, production in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico, but uh, not nearly to the extent uh, that the last big hurricane that went through that um, uh, went through that area. So. Oil down 68 cents to 95.47 a barrel. Gold up two dollars and seventy cents today, two tenths of a percent to 1,675 dollars and sixty cents an ounce. U.S. dollar index. Let's uh, check in on the greenback index here. 
Right now it's trading around uh, 8161, mostly unchanged on the day, up a couple of uh, ticks. You can see still trading well below its 50-day moving average at uh, 8260, but holding comfortably above the 200-day moving average, which is around 80 and a half. So the dollar index uh, not doing much today, up just uh, a couple of uh, ticks. Economic data this week, we're pretty, uh, pretty quiet. We've got uh, consumer confidence data tomorrow. That's going to be from the conference board. Uh, we've got uh, later in the week on Friday the final reading for August from the University of Michigan sentiment uh, index. On Wednesday, the second estimate to second quarter gross domestic product. That should be interesting. The economy grew at a rate of 2% in the first quarter. The first estimate to second quarter growth was around 1.5%. This time around, it's expected to come in at 1.6%. We'll also get a look at the uh, Beige book on Wednesday, as well as pending home sales. Thursday, weekly jobless claims, personal income and spending. And then uh, Thursday is also the day where we will see same-store sales results from many of the nation's uh, retailers. Taking a look at some uh, story stocks today, let's check in on shares of Best Buy. Best Buy uh, was doing well early in the session, hit an intraday high of 1865, shares recently trading around 18, up 69 cents, 4%, but near its session low. Apparently the company and founder Richard Schultz have uh, reached an agreement. Richard Schultz uh, owns 20% of Best Buy. Uh, Richard Schultz is going to be able to form an investment group uh, that will be able to do due diligence uh, so other prospective investors can get a look at the company's uh, books. Schultz uh, has previous, previously offered up to $8.8 .8 billion or $24 to $26 a share to uh, buy the rest of Best Buy that he already uh, does not own. So Best Buy uh, having a good day today, but uh, buying demand drying up here again. The stock is near its session low, still up 4%, uh, but well off its intraday high of 1865. Let's check in on shares of Apple. Apple has um, been holding its gains for most of the day, trading in a tight range here, up 1.9%, $12.52 to 675 74 trading in the bottom half of its uh, range as well. Uh, late Friday, of course, the company was awarded $1 billion by a jury which found Samsung guilty of infringing on Apple's patents. On September 20th, a judge will decide how far to go in blocking U.S. Samsung phone sales. Uh, Samsung's Galaxy devices are course, based on Google's Android platform. They've been very good competition uh, to not only the iPhone, but also the uh, iPad. A couple of key dates uh, coming up for Apple. September 12th uh, will most likely unveil, uh, Apple will most likely unveil the new iPhone 5. The iPad mini is due in uh, October, according to something I saw today in all things D. So uh, Apple, you know, definitely looking a bit uh, extended up here. I'd be uh, wary, of course, of buying the stock after, a, you know, the big run that, that started. It was a $570 stock back in late uh, July. It's all the way up to 675 here. So probably going to see a little bit of consolidation in Apple sooner uh, rather than later. Uh, so I'd be careful of, uh, of chasing it uh, up here couple of uh, beneficiaries. Let's uh, take a look at shares of uh, Nokia, the uh, news that Samsung lost that suit. Um, you know, Nokia rising a little bit, thinking they may be able to increase uh, some market share. Stocks up uh, 19 cents. That's good for a 6% gain to $3.27. And uh, Google has been under pressure for most of the session, trading well off its uh, session low here. You can see kind of a wild day of trading uh, for Google. Its chart looks uh, very similar to uh, Apple's here, just a, a big run since uh, July, but shares of Google right now down about eight and a half bucks, one and a quarter percent to 670.17. And again, the Samsung uh, devices do run on Google's Android uh, platform. In terms of uh, earnings, let's take a look at shares of uh, Tiffany. Tiffany in the news, of course, they came out with uh, earnings. Uh, really strong day for the stock here. Gapped up in price, holding near its highs, up $4.45 currently. 7.6% to uh, $62.95. Uh, earnings were up 4% from a year ago to $0.72 cents a share. Sales up 2% to 886.6 million. 
sales at the uh, chain's flagship Fifth Avenue store fell 9% from a year ago. The store gets about 10% of its revenue from the uh, Fifth Avenue location. Uh, Tiffany lowered its full-year profit outlook, uh, took the uh, conservative uh, route, um, uh, under promise, uh, over deliver, I guess you could say, but they reduced their full year outlook to $3.55 and $3.70 a share from earlier guidance of three seventy to three eighty. Uh, but the lowered guidance is pretty much in line with what analysts were expecting. That number is $3.64. So uh, anyway, T Tiffany having a good day today, uh, gapped up and is uh, trading slightly above its 200-day uh, moving average. So its uh, technical health has uh, improved uh, quite a bit as a result of today's uh, price action. Take a look at shares of uh, AOL, another uh, story stock today. Remember, AOL got um, a lot of money from uh, Microsoft. They sold uh, they, a big patent sale to Microsoft where AOL uh, reaped about $1 billion. Uh, AOL, definitely a strong stock here, finding support at its 50-day moving average back in uh, July, uh, just keeping its price swings on a tight leash here, just showing excellent relative price strength. Shares of AOL up 3.3% today to 33 $3.99. What uh, is AOL going to do with that $1 billion they got from uh, Microsoft? Well, they're going to, uh, they declared a special dividend today of $5.15 a share. It's going to be payable December 14th to shareholders of record December 5th. And they also announced a $600 million stock buyback. So that's the news on uh, AOL today. Uh, merger Monday, big time today. A lot of uh, mergers and uh, acquisitions. Let's check in on shares of uh, IBM. IBM announced an interesting acquisition today. They acquired fast-growing Conexa for $1.3 billion or $46 a share. Shares of IBM down $1.86, uh, trading near its session low to $195.91. Uh, Conexa makes talent management software. Remember earlier this year, uh, a couple of other talent management uh, software providers were uh, scooped up by competitors of IBM. Oracle bought Taleo for $1.9 billion, while Germany's SAP bought Success Factors for $3.4 billion. So IBM under a little bit of pressure today on news of the Conexa acquisition, and uh, we'll check in on shares of Conexa and uh, having a big day. Look, you can hardly see it's... Uh, it's a price point up here. Shares of Conexa up 41.5% today, $13.46 to 45.85. And again, the deal values Conexa at 46 bucks a share. Let's take a look at shares of MTB, M and T uh, Bancor. Warren Buffett's uh, Berkshire Hathaway is a big shareholder of M and T Bancor. They announced uh, M and T, I should say, uh, agreed to buy Hudson City Bancor to expand in New Jersey and a deal valued at about 3.7 billion shares of M&T up 4.5% today to 89.78. Hudson City Bancor, that's HCBK. HCBK, that stock is trading up uh, close to 16% today to $7.45. Headed into the first break, folks. Ken Shreve with you. You're listening to Breakout Investing. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing. Uh, indices bleeding a little bit, not able to uh, hold gains um, as we... Well, we've got about 35 minutes left to go in Monday's session. Uh, the uh, Dow Jones right now down 17 points, 13,140. The NASDAQ still holding on to a two and a half point gain, 3,072. And the S&P 500 up fractionally to 1411. We were going over the um, indices earlier in the uh, program. And what I want to do is just show you once again a weekly chart of the S&P 500 here. Come on now. I think I need a new laptop. Here we go. S&P 500. Okay, so we got the S&P 500 holding uh, very close to uh, a breakout here. At, at this point, the 10-week moving average for the S&P 500, 1386, looks to be a reasonable uh, support level. The S&P 500 right at 1412 or so. So what is that, about 26 points or so? Um, yeah, something uh, close to close to that. It's at uh, 1412 right now. Needs to come down to 1386. That would bring it back to uh, its 10-week moving average. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a pullback uh, of that magnitude for the S&P 500, considering the index just ended a six-session 
uh, weekly or a six uh, six week winning streak uh, that ended last week. So let's see if the S and P 500 pulls back here. I'm not really expecting anything uh, extreme in terms of a, uh, a pullback. Uh, Nasdaq Composite. We'll take a look at a weekly chart there too. Very similar setup to the S and P 500. The 10 week moving average for the Nasdaq is at 29.87. 29.87 uh, last for the Nasdaq around 3,073. So we're talking pullbacks of maybe two to three percent off the uh, recent highs here. Uh, I think that would be uh, constructive. People that are calling the market heavy here, I can definitely see uh, see that argument. Uh, when I'm going through my growth screens, it's not like new, fresh buying opportunities are, are popping out uh, left and right to me. I have been putting money to work in recent weeks in the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio, uh, sitting on several profitable positions. Um, but, you know, the market has been running for a little while here. So, I suspect that some of my, my big leader stocks with the best potential after you know running higher are going to hopefully pull back in light volume, find support in, in preparation for uh, another leg up. So any pullback that we see from here, I'm really not expecting to be uh, long and drawn out. I've been sticking to that story for uh, for a while and just don't see, um, you know, unless, you know, you start to see signs of unequivocal institutional selling in the market. You start to see you know, market leaders break down in, in heavy volume. There's no reason to get uh, too uh, bearish here. Let's take a look at shares of uh, IAC Interactive, IACI. This is actually in a pretty good technical setup here. Stock right now is up 44 cents, close to 1% today to 51 at 94. Uh, it's the parent company of Ask.com and Match.com. They agreed to buy the About Group from the New York Times for $300 million in cash. The New York Times purchased About.com in 2005 for about $410 million. So they're taking Taking a little bit of a haircut on that uh, purchase, but um, IACI actually looks uh, pretty good here. I'm going to switch over and take a look at a weekly chart for Interactive uh, Corporation, and you see there's the daily chart, and then here's the uh, the weekly chart. So watching a swing point here of 54.20, stock is trading close to 52 right now. Um, good technical setup, holding above its 10-week moving average, and not showing anything at all in the way of uh, sell signals here. So this is a stock that could continue to show relative price strength uh, if new money continues to come in from the uh, sidelines. So a lot of uh, M&A activity earlier today. There was actually another deal. Well, um, how many more deals do we have here? I think this is the final one. Hertz, ticker HTZ, having a big day today, up a dollar six eight percent to 1421. You see it hit an intraday high of 1529. It is uh, all the way down in its session low here at uh, 1421, but still up 8%. Uh, Hertz inked a deal to buy rival dollar thrifty automotive group. DTG for about 2.3 billion in cash or 87.50 a share and let's check in on dollar thrifty that stock's got to be trading pretty close to 87.50 and we'll see that it is up six dollars and five cents seven and a half percent today to 87.05 so Hertz buys dollar thrifty automotive group for 2.3 billion and let's take a look at Navistar as well NAV Navistar International is a truck and engine maker. They appointed Lewis Campbell as interim chief executive and uh, executive chairman of the board. Campbell previously served as chairman and CEO of Textron. He'll succeed Daniel Ustian, who is retiring. So new CEO at Navistar International stocks up 2% to 2347 on the news. All right, folks, I'll be back in about uh, four minutes. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, stick with me. We'll be right back. Breakout Investing on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a 
a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about tactical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone. Checking in on shares of Amazon.com today, down two dollars and three cents, eight tenths of a percent to two forty-three seventy-one. Underperforming a little bit, not a whole lot of volume uh, behind the decline today. Amazon had a, a big move in late July, broke out over a swing point of two hundred and thirty dollars. The swing point uh, right here, so it's your breakout. Had another opportunity to pick up some shares when it cleared resistance here at uh, two hundred and forty bucks a share. So. Apple, uh, just you know, one of several stocks in here, not really showing much in the way of sell signals at uh, at all. And uh, you know, it's been a been a solid performer in the market. Uh, Amazon does have a press conference, big press conference, scheduled in Santa Monica, California, on September sixth. It's widely anticipated they you know could be re releasing a new version of the Kindle Fire. Uh, tablet, uh, maybe a little bit uh, thinner. Uh, we will 
see. Mentioned uh, economic data coming up uh, this week. Uh, did not mention that the federal, we're going to get some Fed headlines later in the week. The Fed is having its symposium in Jackson Hole. Uh, ben Bernanke is scheduled to speak on Friday. Interestingly enough, ECB, European Central Bank President Mario Draghi, will be speaking on Saturday. So Bernanke on Friday, Draghi on Saturday in uh, Jackson Hole. Taking a look at some other growth names that are uh, looking interesting here, W.W. Granger. This is a stock that I have been patient with in the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio, but uh, I think it is acting, uh, acting pretty well. It is uh, outperforming today up a dollar 29 six tenths of a percent to 20628 Granger is a distributor of uh, industrial products. A few, di few different swing points here in its uh, chart, a few different highs it needs to get over, but uh, it is starting to get a little uh, jiggy here, which I'm encouraged about. 207.74, that's going to be its uh, high earlier this month in uh, August. There's another high over here of 209.97 almost uh, 210 and then it's a uh, true swing point here of 211.36 so still thinking there's a good chance that WW Granger could attempt a technical breakout volume has been very very light in the stock for uh, for several days now so this would definitely benefit from uh, newfound signs of accumulation not seeing it yet in the stock but again this is another uh, decent technical setup in the market that could uh, work nicely Let's check in on shares of ANSYS, A-N-S-S. -S. I followed this stock off and on uh, during the years. Uh, it is also in a pretty nice technical setup here, uh, ticker ANSYS, uh, or ANSYS trades under the ticker A-N-S-S, -S, up 43 cents today, six-tenths of a percent to 67.94. This is a company that makes engineering simulation software for a variety of different industries. Uh, very nice uh, balance sheet at ANSYS, uh, good good bottom line and top line growth in, in recent quarters, just a very consistent uh, grower, not growing at 50, 75, 100%, but just good, uh, good steady growth, should be able to grow annual earnings um, going forward, 10 to 15% uh, clip. Let's look at a weekly chart for ANSYS because this is where it, uh, it gets interesting here. ANSYS is in a, a very nice uh, technical setup here. It uh, recently broke out of a bullish double bottom uh, structure. The concept behind a double bottom is you have two legs down. That forms the uh, W. See the second leg down here undercuts the first. That serves to shake out sellers in the stock. You had a breakout uh, during this week right here. And then what sometimes happens with these double bottom patterns is that they give you alternate entry points. So uh, you've had a little handle area that formed in this double bottom pattern that has uh, created a new swing point of 69.07. So right now, ANSYS at 67.91, a little more than a point away from that uh, swing point. You know, big Russian trading volume, big upside buying demand. We could see a new breakout for shares of uh, ANSYS, but this is a high-quality name uh, that still has uh, potential here. As the, at least that's what its uh, chart is telling me. Name that we've uh, talked about in recent days. Let's take a look at Blue Cora. This is an internet uh, search firm that used to be known as Infospace, B C O R on the Nasdaq. Uh, Blue Cora looked like it had some life uh, earlier, early in the session, but uh, not looking so great now. Actually, it hit a high of sixteen sixteen. I included it in the show today. Uh, but it, it has reversed, so I'm still a little bit lukewarm on this uh, name. It, it has been holding gains nicely. I do like that about it. Uh, growth prospects are very good at Blue Cora, Blue Cora as, as well, but after early strength, the stock is now only up one penny to 15.67. And we'll take a look at a weekly for Blue Cora as well and you can see a big move here back in July and uh, holding gains uh, pretty well here you've got a swing point of 1677 but um, yeah I mean after today's reversal where it gave up uh, early gains it uh, seems to be some sellers around in this stock so if it does take out 1677 in very very strong volume uh, maybe worth um, a nibble but that uh, has the story has yet to play out yet so let's be patient just kind of keep an eye on shares of blue Blue Cora. 
networking equipment uh, maker, I believe, uh, based out here in California, Ixia. I-X-I-A, Ixia. That is ticker symbol X-X-I-A. Uh, kind of a similar setup to Blue Cora, but this one is trading up near its high today, outperforming nicely, up 73 cents. 5% to 1532 trading up near its session high. This is another strong technical setup here, definitely a stock worth uh, watching. Good growth at uh, Ixia. It is a, a fairly small company. It uh, trades just over 400,000 shares uh, a day, but you know, probably going to be able to grow annual earnings by at least 25% over the next um, next couple of years. It's a small cap with a market capitalization of 1.1 billion, but uh, good uh, good solid growth in uh, in recent quarters after 8% and 9% top line growth in the fourth and first quarter second quarter uh, sales were up 34 percent so nice acceleration in sales growth in their latest reported quarter uh, Ixia makes uh, products used to uh, basically test network uh, performance is your is your network operating as efficiently as it could be. That's what uh, Ixia tells you with its uh, products. So a uh, good solid day for shares of Ixia, a strong stock, good uh, small cap name that continues to do well here. Wanted to check in on shares of uh, Visa and MasterCard. This is really a, a story of, of two different uh, credit card companies here. Visa making a case that uh, is going to be able to firm up at its 50-day moving average here. Visa is a stock that could definitely use some uh, some accumulation. It is um, you know not under meaningful accumulation here, but it technically it is holding up so much better than MasterCard. And the, the main reason is that MasterCard has more exposure to Europe than Visa does. Uh, simple as that. But Visa holding on to its 50-day moving average here. It's up a dollar or two today, eight-tenths of a percent to 127.68. Uh, still uh, looks interesting, still showing relative price strength. MasterCard on the other hand, is a completely different story. I mean, this is a, a, weak, a weak stock. A stock uh, last week I, I touched on this name, saying that buying demand just seems to be completely drying up. Stuck underneath its 50-day moving average here. It's up only five cents today to 4.2250. So what the market is saying is that Visa is, if you want to be in this space, Visa is probably the stock uh, to be in, and not Mastercard. And uh, again, that is the kind of the technical picture of each stock. Tells me, uh, tells me that. Check in on shares of uh, Calumet Specialty Products Partners. Uh, another big day. This is a stock that is uh, extended now, so you want to be careful here. Calumet Specialty Products uh, Partners. The name is a mouthful. It's up another 3.3% today, to 28.51. They make specialty hydrocarbon products. And we'll check in on a weekly chart for Calumet, and we'll see a recent uh, breakout here, but this is one that after uh, four straight weekly price gains and what probably will be five straight weekly price gains, you don't want to uh, you don't want to chase it up here. A pullback down to its 10-week moving average at uh, just over 25 is a uh, a possibility, but for it to do that, we're probably going to need some softness in the uh, broad market. Uh, the bottom line right now is you just want to be careful about chasing strong price performers like this that have moved too far past a swing point. Uh, Calumet, to me, looks like it is uh, extended in price. Limited Brands, another uh, retailer, uh, looking pretty good going into today. They had a nice day of outperformance and heavy volume on Friday. Not such a great day for the stock uh, today. Falling in very, very light volume, but starting to show some uh, erratic, wide and loose price swings in its uh, handle area here, which uh, you know, frankly makes the stock a little bit flawed from a technical perspective. Uh, limited right now down 2% to 47.87. You can see the handle area has been falling forming basically for the month of uh, August here. And, you know, these erratic price swings actually make for an unhealthy handle area. It makes, it, uh, makes the stock flawed uh, technically. It's still possible that Limited uh, could try for a breakout over $50.75, but, um, you know, another thing that you want to see in the handle area is light volume. So, you know, Limited rallies up off its lows, forms the right side of its base, and then the handle area forms right here. The handle area is where the last remaining sellers get shaken out. You want to see tight 
price action, you want to see low volume. In fact, you don't have either in this handle area. You've got erratic price action and heavy volume. So uh, not looking likely that Limited is going to be able to stage a successful uh, breakout here, uh, but we will, uh, we will see. It is still holding above key support levels, and it has been one of the top performing uh, retails, retailers out there. Again, later this week on Thursday, we're going to see uh, same store sales from many of the nation's uh, retailers. Not all of them, but I believe we'll see numbers from limited same store sales uh, later this week. Let's check in on shares of Movado. Movado coming out with earnings tomorrow. And boy, has this thing been acting well ahead of earnings. Up another 5% today to $30.20. That's up a buck 45. Earnings due uh, tomorrow. Earnings expected to be 18 cents a share. Up 13% from a year ago, sales up 8% to 122 million. Uh, Movado, of course, is a uh, watch watchmaker, but uh, good, good, solid breakout here. A stock that has been under a fair amount of accumulation for the month of uh, August and uh, acting pretty darn good after a recent breakout over 30 bucks. Uh, 30 bucks a share. So actually still within buying range here. The, the swing point was the high over here on the left side of the base. So you can see it's still in the uh, early stages of uh, coming out of a base here. And I think I have a weekly chart for uh, Movado as well. Love looking at the weekly charts. They give you a good, they give you good perspective. Let's go to the M's here and Movado. There it is. I got too many charts saved in here. But again, the weekly chart here providing good perspective. Uh, Movado working on what could be its fourth straight weekly price gain. You see this trend line here drawn. Could be in the early stages of a breakout here. Now, of course, the wild card is earnings uh, tomorrow. But the way the stock is trading, obviously some uh, good news has been priced in here. Does Movado sell the news? Uh, it's really hard to tell how the market's going to react to earnings uh, tomorrow. But no doubt trading well ahead of the report. I wanted to take a look at another uh, model portfolio holding here, Express Scripts, E-S-R-X, uh, working on three straight wins in a row. Express Scripts up 11 cents to 61.87. And uh, this is a company, they had a huge acquisition earlier this year. They announced uh, or th that they would buy Medco Health Solutions. It was a big acquisition for the company. It has resulted in very strong uh, top-line growth for Express Scripts in recent quarters. And uh, technically, this is a, another uh, very healthy stock in the market, a name that uh, I would like to uh, add to at, at some point. And you know what? I may get an opportunity to do that. It is uh, holding gains uh, nicely here. And... Um, you know, could could see another heavy volume move here if this uh, market rally uh, continues. So very pleased with the uh, price action in Express Scripts. Let's take a look at another cup with handle pattern forming here. A stock with so-so uh, fundamentals at best, but it is in a strong uh, industry group. This is uh, ticker GRA, W.R. Grace and Company. It's a specialty chemicals firm, and it is uh, working on a nice little cup with handle uh, pattern here, a little low volume low volume shakeout over the past six, uh, seven days. You've got a swing point with uh, WR Grace of $60.11. It's going to be over 60 bucks uh, right here. When I say so-so fundamentals, you know, I'm talking about a company where sales growth has been decelerating in recent quarters uh, from 27% to 19% to 8% to flat in its latest reported quarter. But uh, the stock's technical strength can't be ignored, and bottom line is it is a stock that remains under accumulation here. Uh, so WR Grace definitely worth watching for a possible breakout over 60, uh, 60 bucks a share. So a lot of uh, still a lot of interesting names out there. Uh, like I said, if uh, you know, Ultimate Growth Stocks Model Portfolio doing well, if you want to check out a free trial, you can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Click on the Newsletters tab and then Investment Newsletters. You can find out more information about Ultimate Growth Stocks. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Tom O'Brien's daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, has delivered powerful results for subscribers, and now is the perfect time to try it out for two weeks absolutely free. We're so confident in the value Tom provides his subscribers in his daily newsletter that through Labor Day weekend only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, completely free of charge. We'll even cover the shipping cost. Cancel at any time during your two-week free free trial to Market Insights and pay nothing and keep Tom's free book as a gift from us. This offer is only valid for new subscribers. We've only extended this offer once before and it will only be active for a short period of two weeks. So act now to take advantage of this great offer and be ready to capitalize on a more active, more volatile market once traders return from their August vacations. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. Sign up for your free trial to get your free copy of Tom's best-selling book today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Before we went into the last break, talking about a provider of pharmacy benefit management uh, services, Express Scripts, uh, continue to, continuing to act very well in this market. Uh, so here's the daily chart for Express Scripts. Now I want to show you uh, a chart of another provider of pharmacy benefit management services that is not looking so good. And this uh, used, company used to be known as SXC Health Solutions, now known as Catamaran Corporation, another PBM here, CTRX. 
Uh, again, resistance at the 50-day moving average. That's what this. Uh, that's what it looks like here. Stock is uh, underperforming today by a large amount, down two dollars and ninety-seven cents, three point two percent to eighty-nine ten. Tried to reclaim. Has tried a few times. Uh, in recent weeks to reclaim the 50-day line got turned away here earlier this month in August and uh, reclaimed the line briefly on Friday but turned away with conviction again today so catamaran looks like buying demand uh, really uh, drying up in this stock as well just a uh, reminder a lot of oil refiners uh, doing well today let's check in on shares of Delic US Holdings um, it is up near a session high up another 4% today to 2556 but a reminder that you do not want to chase the stock up here this is a classic example of an extended uh, stock and we'll switch over take a look at a weekly chart for Delic and we'll see the last time it uh, broke out was uh, a couple of months ago it, it broke out over seventeen dollars and fifty cents so at twenty five fifty or so and after four straight weekly price gains uh, this is a stock that just should not be uh, touched up here it is extended in price after the close today earnings from uh, PVH PVH stands for Phillips Van Heusen PVH uh, right now up 13 cents to $88.07 this is a uh, uh, apparel maker they have brands like Izod Calvin Klein Tommy Hilfiger uh, they're expected to earn a dollar 20 a share up 12% from a year ago sales only up 1% to 1.34 billion but um, this is another little cup with handle pattern taking shape here. Swing point of 89.31. That would be the high point in the handle area here. So we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised to see good numbers from Phillips Van Heusen. Um, see if uh, margins look okay at, uh, at, at this company. But uh, it's, it's setting up pretty nicely ahead of uh, earnings. Again, trading up uh, 13 cents to 88.07 ahead of the results. Um, tomorrow, we've got uh, earnings from Brown Shoe. BWS boy is this uh, a stock that has been acting also well ahead of earnings brown shoe up another 2.7 percent today to 1530 hitting new highs under accumulation ahead of uh, earnings looks a little bit extended up here very risky buy ahead of uh, earnings but uh, stock clearly acting well and uh, shares of cyberonics uh, we talked about cyberonics last week this is a, a medical device maker they uh, make these implantable devices that are used to treat uh, epilepsy depression, other neurological uh, disorders, but uh, Cybronics not looking too bad here. It's been firming up at its 50-day moving average. Uh, stock is up 1.6% today to 45.11 ahead of the results. And then Wednesday, let's take a look at uh, Joy Global. Boy, you look back in recent quarters at Joy Global and you see nothing but just really really strong bottom line and top line growth and frankly the company this time around uh, sales are going to be up 25 percent to 1.4 billion EPS up 17 percent to a dollar 88 but uh, this stock has been under a lot of selling pressure down 2.3 percent today to 54.33 so we'll see what results look like from Joy Global on Wednesday coming up next the Tom O'Brien show on TFNN 4 to 6 Eastern I'll see you back here tomorrow folks for another edition of Breakout Investing 3 to 4 Eastern have a great afternoon